Today I'm showing you how to fit new double glazed window seals and giving you some guidance on how to tell if your windows need new seals. Don't worry though, new rubber window seal installation is extremely easy, do it yourself. Why do my windows need new seals? You might well ask. I won't bore you with the chemistry, but seals are a rubber based mix with compounds giving the seals the properties that they need to perform their function. Unfortunately, UV light, heat, chemical attack and ozone in the atmosphere all conspire to attack the rubber compounds and they deteriorate over time, usually over around 10 years and that causes the rubber to lose its most important property, which is its resilience to compression and spring back. That spring back is what allows the seal to push back against the closed window and actually provide an air and water tight seal. And then once this spring back is lost, you end up with your windows letting in cold air. Now you don't need to be Einstein to realize that windows letting cold air in must mean that somewhere else there is warm air escaping and that warmth in that escaping warm air you've paid for that warmth on your gas bill so it makes sense to prevent that warm air escaping the answer of course is new window seals which fortunately are both cheap around a pound a meter and very easy diy fitting I suggest that you check the condition of the seals on one or two of your windows around every three years or so. Perhaps check one window on the leeward side and one window on the windward side of the house. Fitting new seals really does work to cut the draft and it's surprising how much of a difference it makes. With these patio doors that we've got at the end of our lounge and I tend to sit just inside the doors there to watch the TV, in the winter it actually now feels warmer where I sit than it did before and you can tell that the seals are doing their job. From inside the lounge, we used to be able to hear the magpies screeching outside here when they were perched on the fence or on the neighbor's roof. Now, when the doors and the windows are shut, we can look out and see that magpies are on the roof, but we can't hear them. So new seals not only help to cut drafts, they also help to cut noise. But how can you tell if your windows need new seals? With your windows closed, first thing to do is to look at the seals all around your window inside and out because most windows have got two seals if you can see any gap tears splits time to replace the seals if i show you a picture now you can see that looking at this seal here on this window there's actually a gap between the seal and the closed window perhaps on a chilly day if the wind's blowing a little bit use the back of your hand to feel around your window see if you can feel any drafts if you can feel it replace the seals Another little trick you can use, tear the flap off a cereal box and see if you can push that piece of paper between the seal and the closed window. Now I can push that in there very easily and in actual fact as I do so the seal itself is just moving. It does hold that piece of card in place but only just. In another area I have to push quite hard. Down at the bottom here where the uh, mechanism for holding the window shut is I can't push that card in between the seal without bending it. So I've got a good seal here, but not here. You also need to make sure that you buy the correct type and size of seal. Size wise, you need to know how big your gap is that you need to fill. So measure the gap around your window in several places. If you've got a set of drill bits or some hex keys, use the hex keys or drill bits and try to fit them into the space between the closed window and the frame where the seal fits. Now this is a six millimeter hex bit. So I can fit that into that gap, which means that the gap there is marginally larger than six. I've already tried, I cannot get a seven in there. So I'm gonna call that six and a half. Down here and across the bottom, I can't get this six millimeter in, so the gap is below six. I've tried with a five millimeter, it is actually about five millimeters but the largest gap is around six and a half. A seal with a six millimeter bubble would be no good to me because I'd still end up with a gap here, a half millimeter gap. Buy a seal that's got a reach of about two millimeters more than the biggest gap that you've got to fill. Don't go any bigger because if you go bigger, you'll make it too difficult to pull the window all the way shut and you could end up damaging something then, particularly the handle. 
perhaps with the window open have a look at the end of the seal if, if an end is exposed as, as it is on this window or, or just look you should be able to tell I mean this seal is the most common type which is just a round bubble but there are seals of all sorts of shape available try to find something that's similar to your original seals most seals on most UPVC windows have an arrowhead foot which fits into a groove that's molded into the window section to get the old seal off if you can find an end it makes it easier but you can do it in the middle just as well literally just pull it out and just pull it out all the way around bin that depending on the design of your window don't forget that the seal might be separate across the bottom or the top make sure you've measured around your windows and totaled up how much length of seal you need don't forget that whatever your distance is around the edge if there's two seals per window double that and then multiply it by the number of windows you're going to do now when it comes to fitting the new seal you can either cut the seal to length using the old seals as your template but what I prefer to do is just place the seal around the window like so and then to fit all you need to do is push the arrowhead foot of the seal into the groove once you've got the end in you can run your finger and hey presto that's fitted it really is quite easy particularly if you've got the right size of seal if it's exceptionally difficult to do you've probably got the wrong size seal but do make sure that both sides of the arrowhead have gone into the groove when you're fitting it and you're pushing the seal in don't stretch it too far if you stretch it what will happen is it will pull from the corners you might find that doing the uh, top edge of the of the opening light is easier from inside than it is from outside once you've got round the end and as, as long as you're happy that you've not stretched it too far you can uh, just use a decent pair of scissors to cut the seal to length don't forget of course to push the last little bit in it is quite tough on your fingers if you find that that's the case wear a pair of gloves don't forget to do across the bottom if it's a separate piece any difficult areas you could use a small screwdriver to push the little arrowhead into place now repeat that process on the inner seal where you've got a complete rectangle to go around like I have here which means two ends of seal have got to meet make the meeting point at the bottom so that water can't come through before you cut the seal to length where it meets in the middle run your fingers along the seal from the middle to each end to make sure that there's no stretch in the seal so that a gap won't develop and cut the seal maybe about two millimeters extra if you've managed to cut a nice square end on both ends you could super glue the two ends together now if I go around with my magic bit of card I can feel that the seal is much tighter than it was before in all places even in the middle there where the gap was its largest if you got value from this video here's another video i think you'll like and i shall see you next time